Interwebs, this is Inexpensive Arms, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bear Creek Arsenal M4 Profile 16 inch barrel, uh, 556 chambering, 1 and 8 twist. This is a parkerized barrel, it's not nitrate treated or chrome lined, it's just a bit, basically a bare barrel. Uh, so, longevity won't quite be as good as a higher end barrel, but you could probably still expect 15, about 15,000 rounds before it's shot out of it. So, you know, decent, decent all around. And definitely in line with a, a budget barrel. All right, so where did we get the barrel? We got it directly from Bear Creek Arsenal. So Bear Creek Arsenal is kind of a cool company. Every year at Veterans Day, if you uh, prove that you're a veteran, and they'll just store your uh, your information on file, your veteran status on file after the first time, they will ship you a free AR-15 barrel. All you got to do is pay $10 shipping. So that's what I did. So they had three options this year. I chose the M4 Profile. I've been uh, promising to uh, put a video up, and here we are. Um, being in the spirit of cheap barrel, I wanted to make a cheap build to go along with it. You can look right here, and it's a little bit unorthodox how I put this together. Just a standard A2 flash hider. That's pretty uh, standard fare. I put a low-profile gas block on that I taper pinned. Um, Anytime, you know, for starters, I taper pin all my gas blocks just on principle because it's more solid. Uh, but anytime, it's not really required if it's a free float barrel, but anytime you have an exposed uh, gas block, you definitely want to get that taper pinned on there. So, taper pinned the barrel. Um, I had some uh, old uh, carbine uh, length uh, hand guards, uh, the end cap and the barrel nut from uh, pulling them off uh, a couple of previous builds when I was messing around with it. Um, I did not include that in the price. Um, this is a non-free floated build, so accuracy will suffer somewhat compared to uh, to uh, free floated. But uh, I, I think you're going to be impressed with the results I got. Uh, next up, there is a uh, company by the name of uh, what was it? Combat Arms, I believe. This Black Friday that had a deal on a nitrate treated uh, bolt carrier group. Um, and a uh, just a uh, stripped upper receiver for $67 shipped. So that's where this came from. Charging handle I had on hand, but it's an Aero Precision charging handle. I picked up a couple of them for 10 bucks a while ago. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Standard M4 stock. The uh, the buffer tube is an Aero Precision buffer tube, so it is mil spec and uh, not the uh, the weaker uh, Chinesium like some of the cheap buffer tubes that you'll get. So this is a standard mil spec buffer tube. Uh, I think I paid $7 for the M4 stock. You can find them anywhere on sale from about between $7 and $10 pretty uh, routinely. The uh, lower receiver, and I am covering the serial number just because I don't like giving out information on my firearms online, uh, but the lower receiver is a Polymer TN Arms lower. I've had real good luck with these. I put a couple builds together using them. They've got brass reinforced uh, uh, inserts on all the stress points. They're actually the first company to do it. And I've never had one fail. They've got a lifetime warranty, and I've had real good success with them. Some people don't like polymer. Uh, that's not been my experience, though. Um, so the uh, complete uh, complete uh, setup as you see it right now cost me exactly $223 to put it all together. That's the complete upper. That does not include optics, does not include the air precision scope mount. That's the only thing it does not include. Um, I think I paid 70 for the scope. It's a 4.5 by uh, to 18 um, scope and uh, about 30 for the scope mount. But for the purpose of testing and if you're putting uh, together the cheapest AR you can, you're probably going to be using something else anyways. So I'm not going to include that in the price. But uh, I'm right at $223. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, how, how can a $223, how well is that going to shoot? Uh, pretty well as it turns out. Turns out. And uh, we'll go over some group sizes here in a minute. So, I took it out to the range yesterday, and let me tell you, the wind was gusting. It actually blew over my target stand a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> I was fighting the wind and fighting the cold all day long, but I uh, kept plugging at it. So I'm gonna go over uh, how she did, and uh, go from there. All right, first group. This got me real excited, guys, I can't lie. Hornady Match 73 grain. Uh, <laughs> this is the first four shots. That's about a half MOA or a little bit, a little bit more than half MOA groups, uh, center to center. And uh, I got excited of seeing that. And I ended up dropping that last shot because I, uh, <laughs> I got a little buck fever on the trigger there. Next up was IMI Razor Core uh, 77 grain, and uh, that shot out fairly decently. Uh, not, not great though. I, I typically get closer to an inch and a quarter or so. 
Um, but again, this is the spoiler on the group. So 1.85 inches for a five round group. Again, all groups are fired five rounds from a concrete rest um, and uh, 100 yards. So I try not to cheat on any of the groups. Um, just tell you what I got. And if I, if I knew I had a bad trigger press, I'll let you know at the time I do it. I'm I 69 grain razor core, two and a half inches. So again, you know, not great, but not horrible. All right, then I had Federal, and I believe this was Federal Fusion ammo, I want to say it was, but it was the uh, Soft Point 64. Uh, it, it's their basic varmint load, Federal uh, varmint hunting load for something you shoot at coyotes or something. Um, that shot a five round group of 1.9 inches. PMC x -Tac. was not too impressed with that. Uh, did not care for that nearly as much. Um, that is the 62 grain light armor penetrating uh, M855 NATO uh, style ammo. Um, 3.25 inches for five round group. IMI 62 grain, and this is basically the same as this, only uh, IMI uh, makes it, but the, uh, the bullet itself is the same. That was a lot better at 2.3 inches five round group. That's actually about as well as I've ever had that ammo shoot. Um, so I should tell you something. All right, this one broke my heart a little bit. Hornady Black 62 grain ammo. Uh, again, this is not match grade ammo. It's considered probably better than bulk ammo, but it's not exactly super high quality ammo. Shot a three inch group. Um, this again was the first four shots. I got a little bit excited. Um, this one was not entirely uh, entirely my fault. The, uh, the wind was kind of bucking at the same time, and I think I just flinched a little bit on that last shot. But without the flyer, it'd be about an inch group. With the flyer, three inch group. So three inch group, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, but I'm pretty sure that one was on me. Wolf Gold, and this is 55 grain, and it's loaded hot like a 5.56 round if you've ever shot it. It uh, shoots about the same as an M193 round. Uh, two and a half inch group for five, uh, five round group. Winchester White Box, and again, this is the stuff that you can buy at your local Walmart. It's uh, pretty cheap planking ammo. It's generally okay. It's about in line with everything else. Three inch group, five rounds. <clears throat> I was reasonably happy with Fioki. Fioki brass case, 55 grain. Uh, and that was a inch and a half, uh, center to center. Now all my measurements are center to center. So in other words, I don't, I go from the center, center of each, uh, each bullet hole. And uh, that's how I wind up, wind up with it. All right, and then Wolf Steel. It did not like the Wolf Steel at all. It shot it just fine, cycled it just fine. Uh, but yeah, I was at about a four MOA group, which is pretty typical for it. And then I'm not sure what happened there. I, I'm almost inclined to think it might've been me, but I, I don't know. And again, it was, uh, it was a windy cold day. I was wearing about four layers of clothes and you know, shit happens when you're at the range. So uh, make that what you will. All right, but again, this is the Bear Creek Arsenal 16-inch M4 profile, one and eight twist, chambered in 5.56, phosphate finish. All right, so, I apologize if it's uh, disorienting. I'm uh, moving around back here. I don't have an external camera, so bear with me, guys. I'm just making do with what I got. Um, would I recommend this barrel? Hell yeah. I paid $10 for this barrel. I mean, <laughs> right out of the gate, I got a one inch group. That's just incredible. That's absolutely incredible. Um, and I, like I said, I knew I threw a couple of shots in some of those groups, but even if this is a one and a half MOA gun, that's on par with a lot more uh, expensive barrels. Um, the other thing as well is this barrel all over Black Friday could be had as a combination with like, uh, I, I told you how I got a combination of the bulk carrier group in the upper. If you added on this exact barrel and it was a Bear Creek Arsenal barrel, it would have been $30 additional. So basically you could buy this barrel and it might even be still on sale for about $30, um, even at $50. It's accurate, it's a good, good little barrel and I would uh, have no hesitation recommending it. So hopefully this helps you guys. I've got another review coming up here that is not a Bear Creek Arsenal barrel. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, keep your stick on the S guys. Looking forward to uh, putting it up there.